The art form of 3D modeling lets you create almost anything you can think of, and the information I'll share today will jumpstart your journey into 3D. When I started learning to create art with 3D, it was a constant struggle of me trying to follow tutorials and messing up. The only way I actually learned was by slowly experimenting on my own. And that took a long time, just like it could take you. But that's not because you're bad at 3D art, it's because experience comes with time. But luckily through the experience I've gathered, I've learned that there are three key things you need to know to learn 3D. Let's dive into the first component. In the industry, 3D just seems to be things like architectural visualization or special effects used in movies and ads, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. So would you believe me if I told you this was 3D? How about this? As much as 3D is a skill, it's also an art, and with it you can create basically whatever you want. Imagine molding clay, but instead you're moving, deleting, or adding virtual polygons and vertices to craft something that exists in the digital space, which is called modeling. But modeling is just the tip of another iceberg. How do you take something like this, which is just polygons, to something like this? After you have what's called a model, you need to texture it. There are a lot of different names for texturing, like shading or adding materials, but they all mean the same thing. Bringing your boring, single color model to life. Whether it's a rock or a water bottle. While it may seem complicated, texturing is actually really simple. Usually all it is is wrapping an image around your object like you might wrap a present. But of course, you can't get results like this with images like this. And that's what most people don't realize about 3D. You can create a variety of different styles, whether they're realistic, cartoonish, or even abstract. You can achieve any style you envision. 3D lets you experiment with different approaches and create almost anything you can imagine. But if you don't know how to actually get into it, you'll never be able to make anything well. There are a lot of different softwares, but for beginners, there's one that stands out as the best, for me. As you probably guessed from the name of my channel, I use the 3D software Blender, which is one of the most versatile out there, and obviously my favorite. First of all, it is and will always be completely free, which is amazing considering all of its capabilities. Their slogan is the freedom to create, which fits them perfectly. All you have to do to download it is go to their website. You don't even have to give your email. But learning a 3D software can be a challenge, and if it's not done the right way, you'll quickly get discouraged and quit, ruining your chances of creating something special. To make sure you do it right, there are two ways you can go about it. Firstly, there are courses that you can pay for. I've personally never taken any because I didn't feel the need to pay, but they're a great way to learn fast and in an organized way. The second method is by watching YouTube tutorials, which costs nothing and is what I've done. I'm not saying I'm the best, but I've gotten pretty good this way, and it's been really fun. But now that you know about Learning Blender, there's one thing you should know before you get started. Without it, you get better a lot slower. Think back to when you were in school and you learned what a shape was. You probably have learned that every shape has corners except for a circle, which are connected by edges. You probably also learned about three-dimensional shapes like cubes or cylinders. Let's use a cube as an example for this. Each face on that cube is just a square, and those squares are joined together by edges and corners, which are also called vertices. The same goes for any 3D shape, whether it's a cylinder or a pyramid. But you'd never be able to make anything like this with just those primitive shapes. Right now you're seeing the final rendered image of this object, but there's also the mesh. A mesh is the form of all the individual faces together. Here, like with a cube or cylinder, there's a collection of faces that make up this model, connected by edges and vertices, and that's the case with any 3D model. But if you know what a 3D model is made of, but not how it's made, you obviously won't be able to make one. And if you can't make 3D models, you won't be able to get anywhere. In any 3D software, there are tools that help you shape the faces and vertices. Usually you start with a basic shape, like a cube or a sphere. You can change the arrangement of their faces by moving, rotating, and scaling them. You can also add faces by doing what's called extruding, which is what you see here, and you can delete them as well. And while those are the most basic operations, different 3D softwares have different features. For example, in Blender you can use sculpting tools to move the vertices in more complicated ways. But as I mentioned before, modeling isn't everything you do. You also need to texture, and on top of that, render your final image or animation. And there's a big difference between something like this and something like this. So how do you create these different looks? From my experience, this is usually done through a node-based system, at least in Blender. A node looks like this, and you can connect them to each other like this. For example, this node represents an image of wood, and this is the node that lets light interact with your object. If you connect them, the image gets wrapped around the object. There are more complicated node setups as well, like this, which creates a cartoonish appearance. And now you hopefully know more about 3D than you did at the beginning. But there are two things left to do, subscribing and starting to learn. And this video here will help you with that. See you next time.